Alright guys, welcome to Nine Links. That's your host Alex. Uh, today I'm going to talk about what kind of a hitchhikers um, passes that I actually uh, brought inside with me to the indoor. I talked about many of bugs in the past videos uh, that I brought in. Today I'm just going to uh, give you a list of what I brought in and show you an example. Um, so let's go. Uh, first, first of all, fungus gnats. It's very notorious, and a lot of people know that, and uh, it's really hard to avoid it. Mo uh, the most successful way that I th did away with the uh, fungus gnats is using the uh, sphagnum moss on the top layer, about this much from the top layer. The reason being is sphagnum moss, when, it, when it's wet, it's pretty wet. When it dries, it's really dries, and Fungus net main uh, way of finding a uh, pot, what they want to lay eggs in, and you know, for their next generation, it's pots like this, like these guys, um, with the organic mix, nothing covered on top, and when you water it, it's all wet, and they love that, love that decomposed organic stuff. And yes, fungus nets larvae, they do eat, um, they do eat uh, roots, plant roots. So when they are hungry, when they don't have any other food source, they will eat the plant roots. And they're basically eating any decay materials. And then when the decay material is not there, they go for the plant roots. So sometimes when you have a new plant that is not doing well on the propagation, most likely causes either, you know, some kind of a, maybe a bacteria or sickness and on the potty mix. Or there are foreign pests down there chewing on the roots. So how do I counter the, uh, keep it under control on the fungus nets? I use these traps, as you can see, if I bring it close enough, you can see, I don't know if you can see it close enough, you see all these fungus nets trapped in there. On this area, I didn't trap much, because over here, it's generally uh, sphagnum moss, sphagnum moss, sphagnum moss. I just brought these guys over here not long ago. So if we were to look at ones over here, I'll show you show you if you can see it see these are the fungus gnats that I caught on there now would this trap get get the uh, fungus gnats uh, population under control yes would it get rid of fungus gnats no um, as long as you get it under control over time some of the uh, window traps will trap them as well so we prevent it from the population from exploding and you probably ask, if the sphagnum moss works, why don't you use it on these potting, uh, potting mix, or these cuttings? Well, the thing is, these cuttings are for next summer, uh, early summer, I'm probably gonna sell them. So no point of putting expensive sphagnum moss on top of the things you're gonna sell, which the person who bought, who going to buy the plants, going to get rid of it, most likely, and replant it themselves into a new pot, repotting it. So no point of wasting in such nice, uh, potting mix and also sphagnum moss lasts a long time on top and these are premium New Zealand sphagnum moss they will last about I would say six or ten maybe or more years down the road they are not the cheap kind that you uh, people buy from the uh, from the store where they call it peat moss peat moss basically are uh, things let, let's um, Let's jump to a different subject real quick. Uh, sphagnum moss, when they grow, they grow on top of And the peat moss is the dead sphagnum moss, uh, dead decomposed sphagnum moss on the bottom of the growing place and the swamp or whatever you call it. So people get the, the it's already been bro broken down. So, right. so sphagnum moss, New Zealand sphagnum moss, so these are premium kind. Anyway, okay, now back to the subject of pests. Fungus net is number one. You'll see a lot since it's going to be indoor. You, you'll see them a lot. And the second one, spider mites. Uh, spider mites typically, you know, I'll put this one, will be there all the time. And you just can't see it until the infestation occurs or you see the um, webbings and stuff. Or you're, if you're like me, I have a little microscopic glass that I go around and if I see something suspicious, I take a look deep in it down now like last time I show you the wood sorrel like for example like these ones you can tell right away this one's been damaged by spider mite can you see the white specks on there 
my little white specks on there. I cut them most of them off, but I leave some behind. It's not a big deal as long as the spider mite is not on the jasmine or the chili pepper. Uh, if it's a little bit, it's fine. Like I said, you can't really get rid of them 100%. Um, don't try to dose your um, plants in a chemical like, you know, you can buy all different kinds of chemical from online stores or local store about killing the mites, uh, brands like Seven and everything. You will kill the beneficial microbes in, in the pops as well. And sometimes if you get the wrong concentration, you might kill your plants too. Remember, when we bring the plants indoor, they are stressed. They are trying to fit, adapt indoor. Um, so we don't want to cause additional stress. Some of the uh, basic uh, non-chemical way to get rid of them is... Uh, uh, soapy water, very, very light concentration of soapy water, or just uh, get rid of the leaves that has the most infestation on, and just be uh, alert on most of the time. And uh, spider mite, so the first one is fungus gnat, second one is spider mite, and the third one is, um, sometimes I would go with scales or uh, mealybugs, but those two aren't present at this moment. On, all, on any of my plants. So I'm gonna skip those two. I'm gonna just show you what I brought in. Um, as you can see right here, can you see it? The yellow, the green worm right there? I, th I think that name is cabbage worm or maybe a uh, tomato worm. See, I did not see that one until today. Now, I'm not gonna kill it because it's kind of not doing much. I'm gonna see how big it will get. It's a little friend down here to keep me uh, company over the winter. See, it, it, another thing about this guy is that it will remain very still. So it doesn't crawl around, jump around. It will remain very still. So you would think some part of it, it's part of the vegetation down here, uh, flower plants or something that's green. So it's camouflaged in. So you can't really see it until you get closer look. Either that or when it gets really big, start pooping everywhere, you'll see the poops. Um, so far, I think it's going for the war sorrels down there, eating war sorrels. It eventually will climb up to eat the uh, chili pepper. It will prefer chili pepper over jasmine. Reason being is that chili peppers are notorious for these kind of pests. Um, if you plant cherry pepper, tomatoes, you guys know most of these edible plants, you'll see these kind of, these kind of worms on there sooner or later. Most of the time you see them a lot. So I had one, one year I bought in the, not this pet plant, uh, chili pepper plant, different one, it's really big. I did not see the two of the uh, tomato horn horns on there until they get really big and I see the droppings everywhere on, around my pot. And then I noticed, whoa, where's the dropping? Most of the time when you see the dropping, you look up to where the location is, you most likely will find the worm. And to my surprise, it was like two same size as my, as my thumb. And I was like, wow, why didn't I see them when I brought them in? Most of the time when you brought the plant in, they're still in the egg stage, haven't hatched yet. So when you bring it in and the indoor warm climate gives it a push and it hatch and start eating. And these guys, when they eat, they eat a lot. Anyway, I'm not gonna do anything to it. I could have cut it in half, but let's just leave it as it is. Um, now the, uh, the fourth pass on the list is slugs uh, or snails. I have a mix in here. I see some snails, I see some slugs. Um, now, how do I identify slugs here? Let me show you. If you can see down here, the little droppings, little droppings right there, and there are more droppings over here. And if I go over here, you can see the droppings stick onto the pot, on the side of the pot. And then you, you'll see on this side, see, there are a lot of droppings there. And if I see the snail, I'll remove it and throw it into the trash. But I think, I removed about three of them already. So there's another one or two inside this pot, inside some medium pops down below somewhere in there, which I cannot get to. So how do you uh, take care of slugs problem? Slugs actually, or snails, don't do that much of damage, depends on their population and wise. If you have one or two, they eat decomposed the stuff and they're kind of like fungus gnats. When the decomposed stuff are out, they will eat, uh, roots and especially slug the uh, I think it was the lepra slug that uh, 
there are different kinds of slugs. Um, they really love young growth, uh, young growth, uh, like new leaves and stuff. So for here, I'm already removed three of them. So this one, the not an easy way to to track the slug is if you have a beer or something at home, you can have a little cup right here. That's what I'm gonna do tonight probably. You put some beer in it, and they love. Uh, decompose like yeast and stuff so um, it will attract them they'll come out and eat and then, and then you can take them take them away and I occasionally see some sn baby snails down here very small very very small not a not a big problem so they still they eating decomposed stuff and remember when they eat decomposed stuff they poop so those poop can be uh, organic fertilizer in a way now I'm not saying these slug or snail is beneficial insects they're half and half when they get really hungry, when they get out of their natural food, they will go eat plants, roots, new leaves, okay? And then the final uh, bugs I see uh, is a spider, which is friendly. It's not, not a big deal. Let me show you a nest over here by the knee tree, as you can see right here. Let me focus in. See? I don't mind. It's just a little webbing at the spider inside. It hunts all the other insects. If they can find the little ones, it's fine. Um, as long as my whole neem tree is not infested with spider, which I don't think that would be the case because of, um, it's very hard to find bugs inside the neem tree. Most bugs don't like neem tree. All right, just um, that's about it. And there are, well, oh yeah, yeah, so, uh, last one. Moths. Moths typically hide on the uh, night blooming jasmine tree because that tree blooms at night time and so its purpose it's pollinator it's moth it bloom night time open the flower night time to attract moths so the moths will be attracted to it and sometimes i see some worms and stuff well moth larvae on the uh, night blooming jasmine not a big deal but when you bring it in just you know keep an eye out on these moths they fly around they lay eggs on it this and that, which you can see my uh, my uh, window trap is doing very well. Um, they doing their job, keep track of the moth. But anyway, that's about it for today. Um, we'll see you next time. If you have questions, just post it below. Take care, bud.